Reg Hopkins from Burlington, North Carolina. Uh, we've been there for, I don't know, maybe 20 years, 24 years. Uh, came from North Carolina, I mean, uh, Florida first. So moved up here in 90, 1990 and uh, graduated from Southern Alamance High School. And that's where my son goes now. And uh, we've been in the same place for uh, almost 17 years, decided at the same house, doing the same job. I enjoy what I do, so. Uh, I'm a body, full-time body tech at uh, Modern Collision of Burlington. I got into custom vehicles, whew, way back, man, it had to have been back in early 80s, mid 80s, uh, super young age. My dad, he was a full-time mechanic all his life. He was really big into classic cars. Every time I got a chance, man, I was always going to the car shows with him. We would go to Zephyr Hills in Florida, go to their little cruising kind of things, man. You know, and it was all the time, you know. I was, and I knew I wanted to do and, and build something cool, an old car, but I really didn't know what it was. I, I, I liked the classics, but I didn't like the restoration side of it. You know, it, the older you get, you kind of see you want something that's more original because that's you get tired of looking at the same original, you know, uh, plastic cars. You know, I work at them all day long, you know, and that's what I think they are. I think they're plastic. So kind of taking it back old school. And then, you know, my, as I got older, got into high school, first truck was a, was a 65 Chevrolet C10. I mean, it was a long bed, you know, and my dad and I, we went and picked it up, up in, up in McLeansville. And, uh, Stopped at a guy's house and it was just sitting in the backyard. It was it was all the way down to the axle sitting in the dirt Walked in there and the guy said yeah, I'd like to sell it. You know, that's not a problem And I said well, what do you want for it? He said uh, I'll take three hundred dollars for you. And my dad says does it run? The guy said I don't know. It's been sitting there and had old inline six-cylinder three-speed on the column We took an hour and a half and my dad went out there and he got the truck running and physically rocked the truck back and forth out of the ground and we drove that truck home all the way and I'm like this is going to be the start of something cool you know and then as we come on down the hill it was a big long hill almost like sitting in the mountains man big long hill comes down to a stop into it like an intersection dad hit the brakes didn't have any brakes it just kept going it's dad said we're going to gear it down <laughs> gear it all the way down into first gear did a rolling kind of stop kind of thing and drove it all the way home. And it was probably 30 miles, 35 miles all the way home with no brakes. Pulled in the yard, man, and the, the fuel lines were just disintegrated. And the fuel line, fuel's pumping all over the ground. That's it. Well, we made it home. What are you going to do with it? I said, I'm going to cut it up. He just looked at me and shaked his head. <laughs> so that, that just kind of like, the, it just kind of snowballs, you know, and then you have to have something a little bit newer as you go on, you know, something more reliable. So I got into, you know, mini trucks and I was like, well, this is something newer. I can drive every day. I can still customize a little bit, cut it up how I want it. You know, and that's what people, most people around my area, that's what they know me for. And they always ask, what are you cutting up now? You know, well, what's, what's the new vehicle you're cutting up? So, and it's, it's just, something fun is something i don't have to be a cookie cutter just like everybody else every vehicle i have is something's done to it and it the ones i drive every day i really feel like they're blocked because i don't i don't have anything done to them so that's what got me into it man my dad my dad was a big he was a big part of my life when he did that you know he, i just kind of followed his role the vehicle that i've got today is is a different one uh the first one i had just over time, you know, you're you're 17, 18, 19 years old, you know, and you you don't you don't have a whole lot of money, so you're trying to get something else, trying to get something else better. So I always kind of put that truck aside. Well, over time, you know, you're talking probably maybe five or six years, it just goes downhill, you know, it just sits in the backyard. You don't really mess with it. It just you just don't mess with it. So. You know, I was into mini trucks. Really wasn't into the old cars still. I, I liked them. I enjoyed going to the shows and stuff with my dad. So I just kind of 
pushed it aside. And then over time, man, you know, it started to degrade a lot. You know, where it had started getting rust over top of the windshield and over top, you know, in the rockers and in the floors and found a lot of bad body work from prior years, which is, you know, we, we did with what we could afford, you know. So I said, well, I moved out finally and uh, it just kind of sat at my dad's house and my dad had somebody stop by just like I would did. You know, back in the day, and he, he, they were like, yeah, you know, do you want to sell it? My dad said, hold on, let me call my son. That's his truck. So I ended up selling that truck for $300. So I drove it all those years, did all that stuff to it, man, cut it up, put 18s on it. It just didn't have a motor and transmission. I sold the motor and transmission to somebody else that needed it for a Chevy Love. So uh, ended up uh, getting rid of that truck. And then uh, as time went on, you know, I built the Bug, Volkswagen Bug, and then, then you know, had the, the little hot rod, 240SXs, you know, just stuff to drive every day. And after my son was born, I was like, man, you know, I've got rid of everything. And then I was in the process of building a 53 gasser. And I was like, man, I said, I just, I loved it and I liked it, but it just, it just didn't suit me. So she goes, well, what's going to make you happy? What's going to suit you? And I was like, well, I'd really like another truck like I had back when I was in high school. We probably looked for two years and I was just like, this is ridiculous. There, there's got to be a truck out there that doesn't need a ton of work because 60 to 66 are notorious for just rotting out. Nobody cared. Nobody took, you know, it wasn't a popular truck at the time. I was at work early in the morning, which I'm always at work early in the morning, flipping through. And at the time it wasn't, we didn't have marketplace at the time that much. It was just starting to come out on Facebook. So this is why I looked on Craigslist and up popped this 65, 66 Chevrolet C10 short bed. And then all it was, was it does not run. I was like, well, and it was in South Carolina. I said, well, let me go ahead and call him. Looked at this truck and immediately, it was a short bed, big window, factory blue, green, it's called ocean blue. And I'm like, nothing had been fixed on it. Nothing been painted on it. Nothing been touched on it. Inline six cylinder, three speed on the collar. And I'm like, I, I was like, it doesn't need rockers. It doesn't need floors. But you know, you're, you're looking at it going, well, it looks great. He said, uh, so well, if you want it, we'll just go ahead and put it on there with the tractor. <laughs> like, okay. So we put it on the back of the flatbed trailer, man. And I brought it back home. It was back to the house by seven o'clock at night, man. Next day I called up Porterville and was like, Hey, I need this, 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 and this. We ended up with, uh, we've got the Porterbilt suspension on it. Uh, it's all the drop member three front rear, all their cross members front to rear, uh, center cross member trailing arms, and I was in the process of building it, you know, and I wanted, a, I wanted a nice truck. I know what I wanted it to look like. Put it all together, mocked it all up, cut out and trimmed out where I needed to trim out. Called the powder coaters the next day and was like, hey, uh, can you guys do powder coat? And he's like, yeah, we can do it. What do you got? You got something small? And I'm like, no, I don't have something small. I said, I've got like 63 pieces here. When we picked it up and... Uh, had breakfast that morning, went to the house, laid it all out, laid out carpet, I mean, uh, towels and stuff on the ground and started building a new chassis. Got it all finished up. And I was like, man, I said, I need an engine. I was like, dad, I said, man, I said, I need an engine. He said, well, what do you want to do? You can use the inline six. I was like, I said, well, we can use the inline six. I said, but I need the three deuces and I need this and I need that and I need a cam. I said, man, I said, be way cheaper to buy a v8 he said well he said i've got one i said what do you mean you got one he said i've got one i said well, where did you come up with a v8 he said well i've got you know the 57 out there and i was like he said I i'm not going to use it anytime soon but he said i'd like to see it before since it's all the machine work's been done so i'd like you to go ahead and, and use it and get it running and and see you know if it's all worked out and i'm like Dude, I, I, 
I'm at a loss of words on that, you know. And I said, well, tell you what. I said, I'll buy it from you. I said, I don't want you to not have any money for it. He's like, no. Nah. So I ended up, I gave money for it anyways, even though he wouldn't take it. After I got the engine, transmission, and all that built, put it all in the chassis, run all my airlines like I wanted it, run all my fuel lines, everything was in it. And I'm like, okay, so let's just go ahead. Now we can start on the body. Made a jig for it, made a jig on the frame, you know, set up the cab, set up the bed, did all the body work on it, did all the straightening, put all the doors and fenders and, and did all the sheet metal in the bed and, and just called up a couple places. I called up uh, Self Made Fab out of Ohio. I think he's out of Ohio. Uh, and he went ahead and he made me a set of firewall fillers at the time. You know, I'm not real good at bead rolling. I'm a... I'm a metal tech. I'm not a I'm not a bead roller. I was like, okay, so now I got to pick a color, and that took me a long time. If you're a body man or a painter, that is the worst thing that you could ever do in your life is pick the color that you want for a vehicle, even though you know what you want to look like in your head. It, it it'll take you months, and I and I made out I don't know probably twenty spray out cards of colors that I would want looking at and I'd look at it for a couple of days I'd put it in the bedroom I'd put it in the shop I'd pair it to work I'd put it in the ground on the on the toolbox I was just like and after a while you just look at it and go I don't know if I could live with that every day so I finally decided on, on color for the outside and uh, went with a hemi orange pearl uh, at first, I bought a gallon, two gallons of it, and I'm like, well, this ought to be enough. Started putting it on, got it all painted on the outside. I was like, man, I said, this is just not the right color. This is not what I was looking for, man. I said, this is way too light. It's not, I don't know, it just doesn't look good. I was like, so evidently, Hemi Orange Pearl, they make like 18 different shades of this orange. Didn't realize that. So even though it says Hemi Orange Pro, it's not Hemi Orange. It's the old Hemi Orange from like the 70s. <laughs> so found another color. Wasn't too happy about some of the shades that I, you know, from one fender to the other fender, even though they were painted the same time in the same booth. And I was like, okay, so, so well, let's just go ahead and keep rolling on with it. I said, paint it for right now. I'll start putting it together. Steve Kurzman out of... Uh, Charlotte, North Carolina at the time, uh, run Custom Stitch, the Custom Stitch Company. Uh, super nice guy, super cool. Uh, he knew, he at first when I told him I, I, what color I had and what color I was running, he just kind of looked at me on the phone, you know, on, on in person and it, on the phone, he was just like, dude, I don't see that color. And I'm like, you have to see it to believe it. So he pulled in there and he's like, wow, I, I don't, didn't ever know this color would go with this color interior. He said, I was just thinking it would just like totally unclash, you know, totally clash against each other. And then you just wouldn't like it. And I'm like, I'm telling you, man, just, this is what I'm going for. I said, I, want, I need to make a swatch. If you, if you've got any swatches, I said, give it to me, let me know so I can match it up with the, with the color. And he's like, yeah, no problem. So we went back and forth for a little while. About that time, he was like, hey man, I got the swatch in. What do you want to do? So we got it all together. I was like, this is what I'm looking for. So I want something that looks factory with a little bit of a twist. I said, but on the seat, I said, but I, I, you know, I don't want it to be just, hey, we went and bought a seat cover from a custom truck. Made a panel at the bottom of the dash, smoothed it in, used it for the parking brake setup which is not the parking brake setup anymore. That is actually the shifter. So I used, so when you look inside, it still looks original. I took one of the, uh, the parts that Delmo used on one of his vehicles a long time ago and was like, okay, so I can modify this and take this and move the ear. A lot of figuring, a lot of calculations to just make something else work, something different that, you know, everybody looks inside and they're like, well, I've had so many people look in the truck. 
and they'll look and walk around it six or eight times and they'll try to find me and be like, how do you shift the truck? How do you? And they're like, oh, it's that thing on the dash, which is no, it has the AccuAir E-Level up there on the dash. They're like, so is it push button? I'm like, no. I said, it's the parking brake. They're like, but that's the parking brake. I said, well, if you lay the truck out, you don't need a parking brake. <laughs> All the wood that's in the bed, I milled it myself. I, uh, you know, took it and I figured out how I want it to look, where I want it to, you know, and it's not perfect. I'm not a woodworker. I'm not, I'm, you know, that's not what I do for a living. So, but I, you know, if you don't try it, you don't know. You know, so I was figured well, what's a piece of wood, you know, you, destroy a piece of wood yeah at least you learned something so ended up staining all the wood with what i was looking for you know i did a satin finish on the bed side of bed top and bottom in the sides uh got everything fitted like i was looking for and and basically made a hinge system inside the bed so that way at least i could access all my stuff under the bed since you know the batteries under the bed and the air ride suspensions under the bed and you know, all the, all, you know, air ride suspension, basically. Anything that I needed to access in the bed, I could access it without a problem and and be able to be worked on if I got stuck on the side of the road. Started putting it all together, and I was just like, man, I just don't like the color. It just don't go together. So, uh, at that time, you know, I, I, Steve had called me up and said, hey, you know, we got your, uh, got your truck done. Uh, and some really bad things were happening. You know, my dad had passed away June 1st uh, of that year, 2018. Uh, he called me, and I was hoping to have my have the truck back enough so I could at least get him. Since he was a big part of this part of my life uh, with making this, he would always come out there and, and at least just sit there, you know, and have, and have somebody around me. You know, he would sit there and watch me and be like, hey, you know, we need to do this or we could do this. And I was like, yeah, that sounds great. Since he helped me build the engine, he was, he was a part of it. He was standing right there. You know, I'm not a mechanic. You know, that was his job. He helped me build the transmission in this truck. That was his job. He, he did this stuff, you know. Uh, and he had passed away June 1st and uh, never got to see the truck finished, which was kind of disheartening, you know. Steve called me up that day and was like, hey, you know, uh, your truck's ready. You know, I said, well, I can come down there Saturday morning. This was on, I don't know, I think it was like the 6th or the 7th. It was like a week later. He's like, man, I'm sorry to hear about your dad. I understand, you know. So we had all plans, man. You know, my mom, was she was already in the hospital too. You know, she was in, in hospice set up. So both of them were not doing well. Um, it's one of those things, and you know, and uh, went to go pick it up, and I got a phone call saying my mom was in the hospital. Or, you know, I was like, well. So I called Steve, I was like, hey man, I can't come pick up the truck. You know, it'll be a little bit. He said, well, I understand, you know, I'll put everything back in the garage, wrap it all up until you get time. You, you have time. Uh, went up there to see my mom, had a truck and trailer still hooked to it, because I was like, <laughs> We were headed out the road, man, headed to get on the interstate to go pick it up. I got that phone call. I said, nope, I can't go pick it up. And uh, get up there, and the last thing she said, man, was she just looked at me. She goes, did you go pick up your truck? And I was like, no, I had not. I came up here. She goes, well, you ain't got to worry about me. She goes, I'm here. I'm, I'm in the hospital. You know? She goes, you need to go get that truck. I'm like, no, I said, you're more important. She's like, Pfft. she goes, I'll be here when you get back. So, hemmed and hauled around, and she was just mad then. She was just, just looked at me, and she was like, I don't, you need to go get that truck. Uh, she goes, that's, that's just uncalled for, for you to be sitting here. With, uh, there ain't nothing you can do. You can just sit here and look at me. I was like, all right. I said, well, tell you what. I said, I'll go down and get your truck, get the truck, and I said, I'll bring it back. That way, at least you can look at it. She goes, I'll look at it. She goes, I can't ride in it. She goes, it's too low. I was like, all right. So, I took it to the house. Got it from Steve, man, super good. You know, everything was, it was really emotional time going to pick it up, get it to the house, dropped it off, didn't even look at it, just backed the whole trailer and everything inside the garage, and I left and went up to see my mom. Uh, would come back on and off, man, for the next week or so, 
you know, look at it and out in the garage and I'd piddle with it, you know, and when I had time uh, dealing with her and all. Two weeks later, my mother passed. So that's, you know, within two weeks, my mom and my dad both passed away uh, in the same month. Uh, neither of them got to see it finished. You know, didn't get, to, my dad didn't get to see his 57 Chevy get finished either. So uh, the engine has a real sentimental reason to me, you know, to be in this truck. Uh, it's something that was his, uh, something that him and I, as far as our memories go, uh, that body style truck means a lot to me. Uh, that's why I built the truck. Uh, the, the memories are just, you know, it was nice. I had one in high school. That was the truck that I drove to high school in, the first truck that we went and got. Uh, it's the truck that I'm building, that my son is around me, that we've taken to all these shows for, you know, this past year. And it, it, it means a lot to me that he's there as, as a second generation to go down and give it, you know, maybe give it to him one day. Uh, so we get the truck all, you know, after, after dealing with all that, you know, and, and it, it was probably, you know, my wife and my, my, my friends, they're all like, Hey man, when are you going to start back on the truck? And this is years, it's probably two or three years, man. I just kind of sat, just kind of pushed it across the damn garage. just pushed it over in the corner. I was like, man, you don't understand. It's, it's, it's a big memory, man. You know, every time you go out to the garage, especially if you're, your parents or your, your, you know, it's somebody you know is, is big in the automotive industry. And you, you go back in a garage that their, their tools are there or their stuff is there. You know, it's a big part. You know, that's, that's, what, that's how you learn that stuff. You know, and it brings back a lot of memories. And uh, finally one day, man, you know, my wife just was like, hey, you know, when, when are you going to work on this truck? And I'm like, I, I don't know. I need to do this and this. She goes, well, you just need to go do it. So last year, you know, I, I just kind of got a kick in the pants of myself, man. You know, I was just like, man, I said, I, I just need to get this thing done. So I went out there, man, and, and it was it was Memorial Day weekend. And I'm like, I just, uh, the paint's kind of holding me up, and I'm not a painter, and, and it bothers me. When you look at something, man, and the color don't match front to rear, it just bothers me. I don't care if you got tape lines, I don't care, but the color's got to be right from front to rear. So, I was just like, I went out there that morning, man. She's like, well, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm going to go out and work on the truck. So I went out to the garage. I sanded the whole complete truck down. All the bed, the fenders, the sides, the doors. I mean, everything. She's like, well, where are you going to pay it? You're going to take it to work? Because now we are, we're three years in because on June 1st, our company got bought out. So, which means where I was doing, I could take stuff to work to paint it. I couldn't take it to work to paint it anymore. I only had a Saturday because their alarm system works such and such times. Well, anybody that knows anything, man, about taping stuff up and bringing it into work, it's hard to paint a whole truck complete, base coat, clear coat, and tape it all up, paint the whole complete vehicle, and then turn around and put it on the back on the trailer within a 12-hour period and then move it out. It's just... It, it's stupid. It's unheard of. She's like, well, what are you going to do? I'm like, well, I'm going to paint the damn truck. She's like, well, where are you going to paint? I said, I'm going to paint the garage. She's like, well, that's going to look like donkey. I was like, no. So we got to have faith, you know? She's like, well, I don't know how big your faith is, but she goes, I don't know. So ended up painting the, painting the vehicle, man. It's taping it all up, run plastic in it, man. Painted it in the garage. You know, we, to what the color I went and got another whole gallon of paint. I was like, man, I said, it's either going to sink or it's going to swim. Uh, I painted the whole truck in there, base coat, clear coat. Did it in the garage with PPG paint again, man. You know, yeah, it's got some spots. It's not perfect, but it's it's perfect enough for me for right at the moment. You know, considering one person, you know, with very few very few people to help you know, could work on something in a garage and start to finish wiring all your, all your paint, all your body work, all your engine work, the transmission work, the drive line. Uh, I can probably name on one hand how many people actually had involvement in this truck from start to finish. And, and it, 
it, it shows a lot, you know, it, it gives you, gives people, other people hope that they can try something and do it, you know, nobody, nobody wants to sit at high span, you know, you know, not everybody has an unlimited budget to go buy stuff. Nobody has an unlimited budget to go have a, a shop build stuff. For them. Uh, it's, it's not realistic, you know, and a lot of people, they, they just want a little step. Sometimes they just need a little push and be like, hey, you can do this. You can do it. It's proof positive. You know, unless you try it, you're not going to figure out how to do it. And I'd rather try it on my own stuff than try it on somebody else's stuff. And if I fail, I fail on me, not on them. So uh, just basically, you know, buying all the parts and stuff and putting it together. And, and in my vision, this is my vision. This is what I figured out. This is what I pictured in my head 100% to a T. Yeah, I really like to have a bigger engine. I want something with more power. I want something, you know, yeah, I could have gone the LS route. Everybody does the LS route. That's, that's, a, that's, you know, I wanted something that not everybody does anymore. You know, that's why it's a small block 283, you know, turbo 350 transmission. Uh, you know, it's a 373 posi rear end, 12 bolt Chevrolet. You know, it's, it's nothing, nothing spectacular, but clean and simple sometimes wins the race. It's not about having the most flashy and having the most, you know, most this and most that. It's, it's about what you like and what you enjoy. We've got about five, maybe six people, seven people that have, have physically helped me with this vehicle. Uh, you know, my wife and my son, they're, they're big. They're always been backed me 100%. My, my mom and my dad always backed me 100% regardless of what I do. If it makes me happy, I enjoy it. And that's, that's what they want for me. That's what they want for anybody. Uh, Steve Kurzman did a great job on the interior. Uh, didn't need a whole lot, you know, but it, what he did is, is very tasteful, very simple, very clean. Uh, mechanic wise man my dad my dad was a big he was a big hard part of it even though he didn't physically touch anything he just kind of sat back and was like hey no you don't you don't do that after my dad you know he, he was giving me a hand as much as he could you know before his health faded uh had another elderly gentleman man that was always our our alignment guy uh front end alignments did four wheel alignments did rear ends and i was like man you know him and i be we're really good friends you know he's he's almost twice my age but you know, John Boone, great guy, great guy, super cool guy, was in the, uh, v, uh, he's a veteran, you know, so I, I don't mind having somebody to come in and help, man, it is like that, you know, somebody I can learn from, I can, I can, I can teach, you know, teach somebody else now, this is what I've learned from him, and he did a great job, he helped me with the rear end, uh, paint and body work, uh, Steve Brown, you know, he's another elderly gentleman, man. He still paints cars for a living every day, man. But uh, sometimes you just need that that step from somebody that you know. You know, somebody that's a little older. You know, something. sometimes it's not about the younger generation learning. Maybe you need to learn something that's a little older to, you know, some, learn something from somebody older. Uh, and and <laughs> all these companies, man, that, that have, you know, have their great parts. That other than that, I said, you know, there's really not a whole lot of people that have touched this vehicle. You know, that's, it's, that's, what, that's what you know. I know the ins and outs of everything on this, where all the wires go. Uh, been to a bunch of shows this past year. Met a lot of great people. Uh, went to GM Truck Showdown, uh, C10 Revival. Um, we've been out to Dino's Get Down. Uh, Southeastern truck nats. We've been to battle in Bama. I mean, it's we've got a lot of good things coming up this following year uh, We're getting ready to go to LST uh, We'll be there, you know with the relaxed crew uh, Getting ready to go we've got a uh, <laughs> Trucks gonna be trucks go should be on the shirt for Southeastern truck nats uh, It's gonna be on the shirt for battle in Bama one of the shirts uh, Which is really cool, which is I would have never in a million years even even thought about having any of that stuff. Uh, I don't do that for 
for this. I do it because I enjoy this. I've enjoyed it ever since I started doing this. This is this is something I am. Uh, just hopefully we'll get to see the young kids, man. The young kids are our, our new generation, man. And they, you know, even even to see them as you drive down the road, man, to look at it and, and just be like, ah. uh, one of the best feelings I could ever have. And I tell my son this all the time, man, is just sitting behind the truck and just watching the people look at it. That is the best feeling in the world, man, when somebody comes up and they're like, man, this is nice. Well done. Or I, we went to the Christmas parade. I drove it to Christmas parade. And you see all these little kids out there and they're just, their mouths just drop and they're like, ah. You know, that's that's the best feeling in the world. You know, you, anything else, man, that, that uh, there's nothing else that can compare to that. And uh, hopefully in the future, man, you know, maybe I can put that big engine in there. I've got, you know, I've got a couple big blocks. I've got a couple of LS motors. I don't know if the LS motor will ever make it in that truck, but, you know, big block, maybe another small block with a big cam or something in it. Uh, maybe some big brakes all the way around. Maybe a different set of wheels since, you know, everybody goes, all oh, they're old school. Uh, they're old school because they're cool. You know, no, nobody runs those anymore, man. Everybody wants Detroit Steels or Steel Wheels. or It's hard to beat a billet aluminum wheel, man. And uh, I don't know. I don't know what else, man. You know, I may, may switch up some body work on it here and there a little bit, you know. Just do some little things, you know, here and there. I, I want to make it tasteful and, and not do it over too much. Uh, other than that, we're, we're good to go, man. You know, I... I Maybe my son can show it in the next five to six years, man, you know, when he gets driving.